So what's up my tech enthusiasts? Today, we're gonna be tackling the world of Apple's MacBook Pro. And as promised in our last video, you're in for a ramtastic time as we're diving into the heart of the Apple MacBook Pro memory debate. 16 gigs versus 32 gigs. This one should definitely be fun, but still very educational. Ramtastic again? Yeah, you know that's still not a thing, right? You know what? I'm speaking it into existence. Yeah, I don't think that's how that works. But you know what? Let's let the people decide almost like a Roman Colosseum game. Thumbs up for Ramtastic or thumbs down for its complete destruction. Meanwhile, back in the here and now, we're getting into all things memory in this one. I'm talking the unified memory architecture, Mac OS optimization, and even real world stuff. Basically, if you're between the two, you're in the right place. And hey, while you're down there putting an end to this ramtastic thing, or give it life, just saying. Why not let us know which MacBook Pro model you're currently rocking or want to rock and why? Okay, so let's kick things off with a very fancy sounding term, unified memory architecture. Now, this sounds like something out of a Transformers movie, right? The unified memory architecture is here to destroy us all. It's funny, I can actually imagine Optimus saying that. Maybe that'll be the next big bad for the next Transformers movie. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. However, the nerd in me says that this isn't really a bad thing, so it would probably actually be on the side of the Autobots. Because it's actually pretty big game changer in the world of computing see what apple's done with these chips is kind of make everything play in the same sandbox so technologies like the cpu the ram the io they're all combined into one single system or soc for the more nerdier tech jargony people out there so this means that all the technologies can access the same data without copying in between pools of memory so it's like having all your favorite snacks in one giant bowl it's convenient and really efficient you and your snack metaphors well you know i like my snacks i see that well your snack metaphor was spot on it's a big leap from standard memory traditional memory is like a relay race passing data from one point to another but with unified memory it's more like a flash mob everyone has access to the same data at the same time no passing around needed this means better performance and efficiency so if you're a heavy multitasker or into resource intensive tasks like video editing this is a big win for you. But remember, it's not just about the size of the memory. It's how you use it. Right, Arane? Oh, I, I think you just made a penis joke. Maybe. All right, not bad. Okay, smartass. Answer me this then. Is there any downfall to having everything like that in one? Well, Mr. Snack Metaphor, there's always a flip side to every coin. With everything in one place, if one part of the system gets overloaded, it could potentially slow down the whole operation. It's like if you're at a party and everyone's trying to get snacks from the same bowl at once, it can get a bit chaotic. But Apple's done a pretty solid job of managing this so far, so it's not a major concern for most users. Plus, the benefits of this unified system far outweigh the potential downsides for most people. All right, so since you hit on how Apple's pretty good at managing everything, let's talk about how macOS optimizes memory usage. You see, Mac has this intelligent system that automatically manages the overall memory usage. It's like a master chef in the kitchen making sure that everything is running smoothly and efficiently wait we're back to food metaphors again you're making me hungry <laughs> yeah well you know tech and food are like my two favorite things on this planet so it just serves the fact that they'll go together but seriously this this mac system what it does is it basically allocates memories to applications as they need it and then after it's done it frees up all the memory so you have access to it it's this dynamic process that really ensures that your mac is running as smoothly as possible no matter how many applications you actually have open. That's pretty cool. So you're saying it's like having a personal assistant who's always there to make sure you have what you need when you need it. And when you're done, they clean up after you. I could use one of those in real life. But seriously, this optimization can make a big difference in performance, especially for heavy duty tasks. So whether you're editing a 4K video or running multiple virtual machines, you're good. All right, so let's get down to the good stuff. Some real world scenarios, how, how people might be using this thing and you know which one would serve best in those particular scenarios. So we did have some interesting results when comparing the 16 gigabyte to the 32 gigabyte MacBook Pro models. One, for everyday tasks like browsing the web or using standard applications, both models actually performed quite similarly. The way I would put it, it's like having two race cars, but they're stuck in city traffic. Both of them can go really fast. One can probably go faster than the other, but they're both limited to the speed that they can go because of that traffic. Wait, so now my MacBook Pro is a sports car? Because I'm totally okay with that. Well, kinda, in a way. 
Yeah, why not? But here's where the difference comes in. When you start doing more intensive tasks, think of it like taking those same two sports cars and putting them on a racetrack instead of in city traffic. The 32 gig model with the extra memory can handle more demanding applications and multitasking a lot easier. It's like having that extra turbo boost on that sports car. You know what I mean? Got it. So basically for anyone out there pushing their MacBook Pro to the limit with heavy duty tasks like video editing, 3D modeling, or running multiple virtual machines, that extra turbo boost could be a game changer. But for the average user, the 16 gig model should be good enough. Really, it's all about what you need from your machine. Yeah, I really couldn't have said it any better myself. So a lot of people ask the question, is 16 gigabyte really enough for a brand new MacBook Pro? For me, well, it's like asking, is a small pizza enough? It really depends on your appetite, right? For most people who are just browsing the web, streaming videos, working on documents, even some light photo editing and video editing, the 16 gig version is going to be more than enough. And now it's a pizza, huh? Yeah, I think it's almost dinner time when we're recording this. So I guess I'm getting a little hungry. It's going to be my last food metaphor, I promise. Maybe. Probably not. But seriously, it's really all about what you're going to be using your MacBook for. That's going to determine the kind of memory you need. That's so true. I remember when I was working on my degree, I was using a MacBook with like eight gigs of RAM. It was good for writing papers, researching online and some light video editing. But when I started doing more intensive stuff, that's when I felt like I needed more. So it really depends on your needs. So now let's flip the coin and say if 16 gigs is enough for most people, is 32 gigs really necessary for, you know, a brand new MacBook Pro? Well, again, back to my last food reference, I promise. It's like having a large pizza with extra toppings. It's not really that necessary, but it can sure make things a little bit more enjoyable, especially if you have a big appetite. Like me. Back to the pizza again, I see. You, you know, I can't help it. Yeah, I'm thinking we should order one after this. All your damn food metaphors got me starving over here. Yeah, I mean, that definitely sounds like a plan because I'm starving, as you can tell from all my food metaphors. But seriously, though, guys, the 32 gig models is for those people who are going to be running some really heavy duty applications or doing some really high res video editing or running multiple virtual machines. Maybe you're an editor, maybe you're a developer. You know, those are the kind of people that these machines are really going to be suited for, not your regular average user. If you're really going to be pushing your machine to the limit, then you know, the 32 gigs is probably going to be the way to go. Absolutely. I remember when I started doing more intensive things, that's when I really felt the need for more memory because I started getting some slow down here and there, which made me have to close out some of my Chrome tabs. I always have like 20 of those things open for some reason. So for all you power users out there, the 32 gig model might just be your perfect match. But remember... It's all about, again, what you need from your machine. So let's tackle another really big question that a lot of people have when it comes to these two models. And that is, is the 32 gig necessary if you're planning on future proofing your MacBook Pro? I get this one a lot, too. So let me go ahead and dip into my bag of metaphors again, but not a food one this time. I promise that was my last one. I'm going to say that it's like buying an oversized coat for a kid, hoping that they'll grow into it. But in tech, things can be a bit more complicated. Now it's a kid. <laughs> not quite. But the idea is that as software becomes more demanding over time, you have more memory that could potentially extend the lifespan of the machine itself. You know, like as the kid grows, he grows into that larger coat. That's a good point. But on the flip side, it's also important to remember that other components can age too, like the battery or the display. So while having more memory might help with a future proofing, it's not the only factor to consider. It's like buying that oversized coat, but forgetting that kids also need new shoes as they grow. So for all you tech enthusiasts thinking about the future, keep in mind that balance is key. So, all right, guys, let's wrap this up before this video becomes too long. The choice between 16 gigs and 32 gigs in your MacBook Pro really depends on your usage. If you're using standard applications and not really pushing your machine to its limit, 16 gigs should be more than enough. But if you're running some heavy duty applications, multitasking extensively, you might benefit from the extra memory the 32 gig models offer. That's a solid point. It's all about understanding your needs. Exactly. Exactly. So really my personal recommendation to anyone who would ask is that you really just need to assess your needs and choose accordingly. There's really no universal answer here. I couldn't agree more. It's all about what you need from your machine. And remember, folks, it's not just about the size of the memory. It's how you use it. So. 
whether you're a casual user or a power user, make sure to choose the model that best fits your needs. Well, everyone, that wraps up our deep dive into the world of MacBook Pro memory. I really hope that this clears up some of the questions you may have. But hey, if you have more, don't be shy. Drop them in the comment section down below this video. We monitor our comments all the time and we try to respond as quickly as possible. And you never know, somebody in the community may have the answer you're looking for. So you might get it before we even get to your question. Absolutely. We love hearing from you guys. And hey, make sure to tune in next week. We've got something really exciting lined up. Should we give them a hint? <laughs> Let's just say that if you thought today was fantastic. Yeah, can't wait for that not to be a thing anymore. Then you're in for a treat next week because we're going to be revisiting one of the videos that I did on this channel a while back about Amazon Renewed. But we're going to tackle it from a tech angle. Can you really trust Amazon Renewed when you're buying expensive tech? We'll see. So till next time, guys, remember to stay strong, stay safe, stay curious. And of course, stay tuned for more tech insight. Peace out, everyone.